the side effects I always notice when I start Clem was, um, yeah, you get a little bit of a tremor, which really didn't bother me too much. Um, I mean, you might get a little warm. I, I was always warm <laughs> when I would diet. I was always sweating. So I don't know if it was the clenbuterol or anything else. I think it's just, you know, your metabolism is amped. Uh, the thing that I didn't like was... created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Television, rxmuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, your 30 minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. It is Arnold Classic Week. Tomorrow, Dave and I will be in Columbus to start our coverage of Arnold Classic Week. And of course, tomorrow uh, is going to be the Meet the Athletes. So we're going to try to grab as many athletes. Not only that, but, you know, really whoever else is there, uh, other analysts, um, bodybuilding legends, whoever's in the room, uh, we'll try to get them on camera and, you know, look. These big contest weekends, you never know who we're going to bump into. So we're going to make sure that we get everything on camera um, and bring it home to you guys. So if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, hit the not notification bell. You're not going to miss anything that we have going on over the course of the next four days in Columbus, Ohio. We're going to go right into the We have a lot of questions, so we want to try to squeeze in as many as we can. Um, either later tonight or at some point tomorrow, we'll be dropping Dave's I guess, official prediction video for the Arnold Classic. Um, but yeah, so that you could expect later on in the channel. All right, let's go to the questions. Of course, the first few questions on the show from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. First question, um, the best way for you to find your macro split, can you explain for bulking and cutting? I've been with a coach and I kind of feel like it's a cookie cutter setup at this point. You know, it, it, there is a formula, essentially. So, I mean, it is there is a template. I mean, it's not like rocket science. I mean, it, it, I when I teach my secrets to becoming a diet guru course, which I did last weekend, we had a really nice turnout, and I know everyone really had a good time. You know, we go through all this information. And, and I, what I've discovered, at least in contest prep, is about anywhere from a gram to a gram and a half per pound um, that you weigh, it, you know, assuming that you're not – grossly overweight you know if you're 300 pounds and you should weigh 200 pounds you're not going to base it on a 300 pound you know person you're going to base it on like a 200 pound person but but most people are not grossly overweight who are competing so if you're 200 pounds you know you know usually three 250 to 300 grams of protein is usually adequate you know and i'll usually err on the higher side to start the diet you know with fat if i'm doing like a protein fat type diet i'll do anywhere for women half a gram per pound for men, three quarters of a gram per pound. Um, and then if I'm doing some, uh, you know, if I'm doing a rotation diet where I'm doing maybe protein and carbs, uh, you know, one day and then protein and fat another day, for the carbs, you know, I might go a half a gram per pound that the person weighs. So, it, but it varies, you know, it varies on the person's metabolism. And, and that I could assess if I'm first starting to work with someone, I look at their pictures, see how lean they are. You know, I ask them their, their history. I look at their contest pictures if, if they've competed before. And I kind of can get an idea of what they're going to do best on. And then as the coach, this is where the coaching comes in because the template is, is really the initial starting point is just a starting point. So I can give 20 people the same exact you know, starting point, but it's how I alter that starting point that as the day is going. So I'm getting updates from my people two times a week minimum, sometimes three times so with pictures. 
So if they're not losing weight and, and, and dropping, then I'm going to cha make changes. You know, I might make changes to cardio. I might make changes to how much protein they're eating, how much carbs, how much fat. It really depends on how their body is responding. Sometimes the people lose too fast. I might have to give them more food. Now, the first two weeks, you're always going to lose a lot of weight because you lose a lot of water weight. But once that two weeks passes, if the weight keeps dropping too quickly, then I got to give them more food. And, and that's that's where the expertise of the coach comes in. And the more experience you have and the more you know how to troubleshoot issues, you know, that's how it, you know, that's will show how good or how bad you are as a coach. You know, I have a lot of people who come to me that have had very bad experiences with other coaches because they, they couldn't. These coaches were good for people who had good genetics. But for people who had stubborn genetics, they were terrible because they they didn't know how to troubleshoot the problems. And those people come to me and, and I get them all in shape. But that's a lot uh, because I know the science of what's going on and I know how to troubleshoot problems because of my educational background, but also because of my experiential background. So the longer you've been doing this, you know, assuming that you constantly are learning and taking that data and processing it, you're going to be able to troubleshoot issues better. And so don't get down at your coach just because you and your friend have the same start diet. However, if you're not making as good a progress as your friend and your coach is not changing your diet, that might be a problem. So take that for the George. Let's go back to the app questions. Um, everyone claiming to be another coaching question with everyone claiming to be a quote unquote coach nowadays. Um, how come no one will coach themselves? I mean, some people do. I, I did my own diet the last, you know, couple of years that I competed because, you know, it's, it's but it's, I'll be honest with you, it's hard sometimes to take a, a God honest look at yourself and, and know what to do because you start second guessing yourself and you start overdoing things, underdoing things. It's, sometimes it's nice to have an unbiased eye. Even when I coached myself, I still would pose for other people that I respected and they would tell me, you know, honestly, if, if I'm on track or if I'm not on track. And, and that, and I think that's important because if you don't do that, okay. And, and then you start, you know, getting nervous, you know, getting close to a show, you can start overdoing things, you know, and believe me, I'm not immune to that either because, you know, when there's a lot of pressure on, you know, I, I there was a couple of times I was competing. I had just played second, you know, at USA, second at nationals. And you start saying, well, maybe I'll try this. I'll try that. And, you know, sometimes you need someone to tell you, don't change what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? That, and that's, you know, just common sense. But a lot of times you don't realize that, but, there are, you know, it is hard to, to coach yourself. And I will tell you that. And like I said, in the beginning of my career, I never coached myself. I, I did to a certain degree, but I always had someone who was looking at me and saying, no, 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 no. You need to lose more. No, 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 no. You lost too much. And uh, probably if I had had a coach like a Chris Aceed or someone to look at me that I really valued their opinion back in the day, because there really wasn't a lot of coaches in the 90s. You know, I was coaching people who were just coming over to my house, basically. There was no online. There was that wasn't. There was no existence of that. And had I had that, maybe you know, I maybe I would have you know looked different. I don't know. Who knows? You know, you can never tell. But I think it's a good idea to have a coach, even if you are a coach, because once again, heart. I have guys that hire me to, to do their wives' diets because they're like, I you know, when you're married to someone. They don't want to listen to a word you say. They think you're an idiot, even though you can help a hundred other people. You know, <laughs> it, it's hard to you know it, it, you know talk to each other. And a lot of times I, I do, you know, really good coaches and I do their wives diets because it's just a lot easier uh, for him not to be stressed out about that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's always good to have a, a second eye looking at you. And uh, it takes away the um, when you're too close to someone, it's hard to sometimes tell them the truth. It doesn't matter. It means a stranger. If I think you look like shit, I'm going to tell you, you look like shit. We got to do something about it. And you'll probably respect that. Whereas if your partner tells you that, you know, it could end your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, gotta be careful of that. Anyway, that that's you know my take on it. Nothing wrong with having a coach. And uh, these two questions, by the way, were from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Guys, it's the app has been growing by leaps and bounds. Thank you so much. It's twenty nine dollars a month. You get access to all my writings, all my videos I've ever done. We do a Q and A video especially for the app every single week. We also do a uh, I answer everyone's questions and answers in an open forum in the app, so you can see that. Uh, on a regular basis. So we put up a workout every single week on the app too. So it's a really great um, uh, learning experience and it's constantly evolving. So check it out at the iTunes store or your Android store. Uh, before we go to our Facebook and Instagram questions, Dave, uh, Titan Medical and uh, uh, Tessa Morellin. Uh, yes. We wanted to talk about Tessa Morellin from a Titan Medical. Team. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Titan Medical is doing a little uh, special on Tessa Morellin. 
which is also known as if you've ever heard of the uh, the AIDS drug egrifta. Egrifta was, uh, you know, originally they were giving AIDS patients and people who had wasting syndrome serono serostim growth hormone, but it was very expensive. So they they came out with a growth hormone releasing peptide stimulates the pituitary to cause your own growth hormone release, and they called it egrifta. And the generic of egrifta is this um, tes tesamorelin. It's a growth hormone releasing peptide, and it's uh, you can. Titan Medical is selling it. Uh, it's one of their best sellers. It, it's probably the most potent growth hormone releasing peptide. If you can't afford GH and you don't want to use it, you, but you want something that's going to increase your body's natural growth hormone release in the most effective way possible, this is a proven you know, prescription drug, but approved by the FDA. And this is the generic compounded form of it. And you, know, you can contact our friends at Titan Medical Center and they can uh, hook you up with that stuff. Really, really good stuff. And they got some really cool peptides coming to Titan. I'm going to talk about it over the next couple of weeks, but they were telling me what they were and I was getting super excited to hear what they were uh, going to be selling very shortly. I don't want to tell you anything about it yet, but need needless to say, this is going to be the uh, Arnold classic sale. So ask them for a test more own and tell them Dave Palumbo and Rx Muscle sent you for a good discount. Thank you. Let's go to our Facebook questions. Again, if you're not already following us there, search in the search bar Rx Muscle on Instagram, official underscore Rx Muscle. Jose Luis Ravello, um, how long do I have to wait post training to use an anti inflammatory so that I won't affect any muscle gains? You know, um, the only thing I ever use for pain in my whole career, if I was in a little bit of pain, would be um, Tylenol because Tylenol is not an anti inflammatory, it's just a pain reliever. If you know, if you have an, a severe injury that has a tremendous amount of inflammation, you can use an, a, a non steroidal anti inflammatory. I mean, you can do it, okay? Because I think in that case, the negatives of excessive inflammation outweigh the positives of actual muscle growth. However, if you're on a regular basis taking non steroidal anti inflammatories like ibuprofen and stuff like that, just because you don't want to feel sore. Not a good idea. That's going to inhibit muscle growth because that acute, meaning short time, inflammatory that response that, that is initiated after you train and break down muscle fibers, okay, is the signal for your body to come and repair those muscle fibers. If you take away that inflammation locally, you're not gonna you can blunt the muscle repair process and the muscle building process. So you don't want to do that. So I try to tell people as little as possible use non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. If you have a headache, take Tylenol. I, I only use Tylenol. Even when I get sick and I have a fever, I only take Tylenol, okay? Because ibuprofen does have muscle. You know, it's, it's going to prevent you from, especially if you're training and you start taking that regularly, it's just not good. Now, if you, like I said, if you have an injury where you have excessive inflammation and you just really need it, then you use it. That's all. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just I would not on a regular basis be taking that. Let's go to what Andrew Apuzo is using a back extension machine good to strengthen lower back. Deadlifts are out of the question for me. Yeah, I use uh, the hyperextension machine all the time. I use it almost every time I'm in the gym. I'll do like one or two sets at the end of every workout. Because I think, you know, well, I think I know that having a strong core, okay, is going to help you, especially if you have back issues or prevent you from getting back issues. Um, so I train my abs. And I train the lower erectors, spinal erectors with the, with the you know, the um, hyperextension machine. And I do those like four or five times a week. And I don't do a lot of sets. I might do two sets of abs every night, you know, while I'm watching TV. Although I haven't been doing them this last two weeks because I just got my, um, you know, I had that little hernia surgery. I, I'm missing actually doing them. I can't wait to go back to them. And I do the hyperextensions at the gym also for the lower back. And that creates this muscular belt around your waist or at, around your core. And it really helps, you know, keep your back in place. I think that if by not doing those exercises, your your back gets weaker and weaker as you get older because there's no support there. So you, you're you're actually creating uh, a physiological belt that's holding everything together there. And so it's important not only to train abs, but to train the lower back. And it's not also you don't want to just train the lower back and not the abs. You have to do both. Keep that synergism. Let's go to uh, Damien Deline or Deline. When you're taking fat soluble vitamins, is it wise to take it with fish oil and a low fat meal? And secondly, if you ate a higher fat meal about an hour before but forgot your stash, can you take those vitamins and they'll still get absorbed by the time you get home? 
Yeah, sometimes I forget to take my vitamins right after I eat, and I might take it an hour and a half later because the food is still kind of in your intestinal tract. It takes a, if you're eating a meal, it takes a long time for that meal to kind of dissipate. Uh, I I take all my vitamins together, so I take the fat soluble and the water soluble together. It's, it doesn't matter because in a multivitamin, you're going to have fat soluble with water soluble mixed in there already. I take the fish oil, I, I everything. I take like a, a handful of pills twice a day. If you saw how many pills, and I don't I don't take them one at a time. I take the whole handful. 25 of them or whatever it is, put them in my mouth, sip of water, and I swallow it down. That's hardcore. No, don't do that. Most people will choke. I have a big mouth, as you guys know already. So, so I could do that. But no, you, you can take all your vitamins one time. I usually eat a meal and then take them right after. If I if I forget, like I said, an hour later, it's fine. You know, I wouldn't take them on an empty stomach because a lot of times some of those vitamins will upset your stomach if there's no food in there. But if the food's kind of still in there because you know you just ate, you know, a little while ago, you're fine. Let's go to uh, uh, AJ says his friend is a professional classic physique IFBB pro and Olympian uh, getting ready for a show. He's five weeks out. He's been doing multiple low carb days. More or less a low carb day would be around 80 grams of carbs for him. He's 254 pounds, six foot two, has been a consistent at a consistent body weight for three weeks now. We have not been able to drop any weight on the scale. This morning, he woke up with severely swollen ankles. What do you think the cause of this is? Um, you know, it could be excessive inflammation. It could be he's a little overtrained. When I when I have a person who hits a wall like that, especially a big guy like that, and he's eating low carbs and probably doing a lot of cardio, what I usually do is I'll give him a couple days off. Because, you know, a lot of guys go every single day. You can't weight train every single day. And sometimes even the cardio is, is, is too much every day. So I, I'd give them like a day, like two days in a row off, you know, no, no cardio, no weight training, relax, you know, a little bit. And I'd feed them more on those days. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but that's what you have to do. Give them some more carbs, you know, maybe bump his carbs up to 150, 180 grams for those two days. And then start again. In other words, after the two days off, back to the gym, back to cardio, drop his carbs again. Usually that little boost in carbs will result in weight loss. Um, the re extra rest too will reduce the cortisol levels in the body and, and let the body start to recover a little bit. And I think it'll start kicking in again. I see it a lot. I have women I help sometimes. and they're, I'm, I have almost no food. They're doing a lot of cardio and, and nothing's changing. I'm like, Look, I know they're not cheating because I ask them a million questions. I'm like, you know what? We're doing the opposite of what I what, what logic would tell me to do. Logic would tell you, hit them harder, right? When you're that, when you've already been doing so much to them and it's not working, you do the opposite. You give them more food, you give them rest, and then it resets their body. And, and usually, usually a lot of the, the weight stubborn weight loss, I mean the weight that won't come off, is due to just like excessive. Um, cortisol levels and the body's just run down and it needs a break. It's, it's basically telling you, sorry, we're shut down for business. We're not doing anything. And the only way to kind of reopen the business is to give it a break. So give that a shot. Let's go to uh, Travis James. Do you see much lingering adaptive thermogenesis when someone diets too frequently and hasn't had a chance to get calories and body weight back up? Yeah, you, you can't keep peaking indefinitely. And I think what happens is people do a show, they look really good. Everyone's like, keep going, do another one. And they and they they're all, you know, they're all psyched up because they're like, they feel great, they won the show, they just finished carving up. And then they go back on the diet. And after three days, they're like, I can't keep doing this. Another six weeks. I, I want to kill myself. I want to blow my brains out. So, but some people will will push through it anyway. But the body, it's hard to get the body to peak over and over and over again. Some people can do it. A lot of people, they, they start looking worse. It's like they're not cheating, but their bodies are just not responding. It, they look kind of like, well, eh, so-so. They, they're not, they don't have the pop they had. They don't, the, the body just doesn't look the same. It's very hard to peak over and over, especially if you peak 100%. If you get all the body fat off, you dry out, you're at your absolute best on stage, where do you go from there? You almost have to go the other direction. You have to kind of feed the person a little bit, get them de-peaked, and then re-peak them. But it's sometimes very hard mentally to do that. Um, if you try to keep maintaining that peak for a long period of time, they crash and burn. So, you know, it's hard to do. Now, if you did a show and you weren't at your best and you know you got a little bit more to lose still, those guys and girls usually are okay because they can go another four or six weeks, get all the rest of that fat off, and then compete at their best because they really haven't peaked yet. They almost peaked. Different, different scenario. 
Let's go to NY Bigger. Um, you know, another question relating to that testosterone roundtable that you did with uh, Dr. John Pierce right. and uh, Don Matasio. So we may want to make that maybe a semi-recurring feature because yeah. we've gotten a lot of positive feedback and a lot of people have been asking follow-up questions from it. Um, so he, his question is, aside from increasing, um, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, estrad estradiol, estradiol? Estradiol, yeah. Yeah, estradiol. Uh, what is the best way to improve your endothelium cells? Also, if they've been damaged, can they be repaired? You know, here's the problem. Everyone doesn't, no one really knows exactly what's going on with the the blood vessel walls and how they're being damaged and how to repair them. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is keep inflammation very low in the body. You know, I'm, I'm not talking about taking anti-inflammatories like non-steroids. I'm talking about eating an anti-inflammatory type diet, taking your, you know, omega-3s and omega-6s in the right ratios, kind of the way we have them in omega lies. you know, eating, you know, no sugar type stuff because sugar is very inflammatory that's usually, it's those, it's those high sugar, high saturated fat foods that tend to really irritate the crap out of the, the blood vessel walls for some reason. And, and it's, that, it's the sugar consumption that actually increases LDL cholesterol. A lot of people, we originally thought, well, LDL cholesterol is cholesterol. It's probably from eating cholesterol that you get high LDL. And that's not the case. Even the American Heart Association admitted that, that there's no evidence to show that eating a diet high in saturated fat will increase you know, LDL cholesterol. It's more carbs, carb related, believe it or not. So, you know, best thing you can do is just live a healthy lifestyle, exercise, keep blood flow going through those vessels. You know, um, there's some theories, some people think like, I know Jay Tom, Tom Campbell, who comes on the show a lot, he thinks that, you know, the aromatase inhibitors are responsible for, you know, the blood vessel walls uh, being screwed up. Maybe he thinks they're a direct threat to the walls. It could be the fact that you're just lowering estrogen so much. It's really hard to tell, but the, the, the answer to the question all the questions that get answered in this respect is balance. And I know as bodybuilders, because I had a very difficult time early in my career with balance. I was, the, I was always on one extreme or another. When I was a runner, I was running 10 miles a day, never taking a day off. When I became a bodybuilder, I was on this extreme. I had to be the huge, never stop eating. You know, don't worry about health as much, just get big. So the correct answer is in the middle someplace. You got to find that middle ground where you can put muscle on, still be healthy, check your health markers, Make sure that you're not you're not hurting yourself long term, yet still make the best gains and progress possible. And it is possible to do that. And that's I've really worked probably the, the last 15 years of my life has been dedicated to figuring out how to take what I learned the first, you know, 15 years of, of bodybuilding, which was how to get huge and how to get ripped, and integrating it with how to be healthy while you're getting big and ripped. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're pretty close to it. You know, I'm pretty close to the, 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 the perfect balance of that. And, but it took a long time for me to do that, to figure that out. And, you know, I give you guys a lot of information here and a lot of people love the information and I get emails and texts and people thank me when I see them in person, other people, it goes in one ear out the other and that's fine. Some people have to wait till there's something wrong with them before they come to me or before they start listening and hear the music, so to speak. But there is a way to get big. There is a way to get ripped and still be healthy. But yeah, there's a couple rules you have to adhere to. And if you watch this show on a regular basis, you know what I'm talking about. Let's go to a MacGyver's Rusty Pocket Knife. Love the name. Uh, thoughts on doing cables for biceps over dumbbells and barbells? Example, I feel cable, cable preacher curls more than barbell preacher curls. You guys, if you guys watch this show regularly, you know I love cables for arms. I got that from Vince Taylor years ago. I had a, tr a lot of trouble. I had, did not have big arms. And my arms, you know, were up to 22 and a half inches when I was competing. You know, and I've re <laughs> I remember my, my, fa very, my father gave me very, very, you know, little feedback on bodybuilding because he really didn't know much about it. Oh, we keep losing Cynthia. But he did tell me this. He said, your arms don't look like those other big guys. <laughs> when, I first, when I first started getting into it and getting on the national level, you know, even he knew that I, I, I had was lacking because I have a long arm, you know. He said, Dad, my arms are like 19 inches or 20 inches. He goes, well, eh, they don't look as big as those other guys. And so that drove me crazy because he was right. I knew they were out of proportion. So I got them up to 22 and a half, but I did it with training. And it was really, I learned this from, I had had some arthroscopic sh shoulder surgery. And I was coming back to the gym and just starting to train. And I didn't want to use anything heavy. So I was just using cables and really squeezing. I said, you know. I'm getting more out of these 
cable workouts with light weight, squeezing my biceps than I, and, and triceps than I do when I do skull crushes and I do heavy dumbbell and barbell curls. I never feel it in my arms like that. And I talked to Vince Taylor about this, and I read an article he had done in a magazine about it, and he, and he was talking about isolation. You know, people with bit long arms need to isolate those, those muscles. And what I realized was that I can lift heavy and still do those isolation movements, and I'm not feeling it in my shoulders, my back. You know, I'm not cheating. I'm, I'm using my arms. And you know what? Ever since I started doing all cable work, and a lot of it's unilateral, one arm at a time, my arms started growing at, at, at an exponential rate. I probably put two inches on my arms in a very short period of time within a year just from learning how to train my arms properly. And I realized that there are no rules. Some people can do, you know, barbell curls and grow. Some people can't from it. You know, if you have a short arm like Lee Priest, you can do anything and your arms grow. But mine were not responding. And I helped a lot of other people with long arms too. And I told them the same thing and they tried it and they said, wow, I can't believe it. So yes, cables do work. You have to use good form, full range of motion, and you got to use heavy weight. You can't do lightweight. Doing reps is not going to build big arms. I still lifted heavy and pushed to maximum intensity. I just did it in an isolating way. Take a couple of more questions. Uh, Alexander Ruin, coach, I know you have videos on Clen, and I've watched them all, but what to expect when you start with 20 MCG twice a day if your stuff is real? Do you sweat? Do you get warmed up? The Clen shakes people talk about, et cetera. Yeah, and the, first, the side effects I always noticed when I start Clen was, um, yeah, you get a little bit of a tremor, which really didn't bother me too much. Um, I mean, you might get a little warm. I, I was always warm <laughs> when I would diet. I was always sweating. So I don't know if it was the clenbuterol or anything else. I think it's just, you know, your metabolism is amped. Uh, the thing that I didn't like was I used to get headaches for the first two weeks. And they're really bad headaches. And I didn't know what they were being caused by initially because no one tells you this stuff. You know, there was no, no, there was no information back in the 90s. And I realized that it was from the clenbuterol. And uh, you could take, a, you could take a, like, two Tylenol and it, it'll go away. And it seems to the headaches seem to go away about after two weeks of using the clenbuterol. So, I mean, if you can deal with that, the other thing clenbuterol does is it, ma it makes you stronger by making the muscles contract harder. Sometimes you get cramps. Like I, if you, you sometimes I know a lot of people tell me this. If you yawn, you get a cramp like under your neck here and your neck muscles. Sometimes people get cramp, a camp, a calf cramps. They might get hamstring cramps. Uh, that's kind of common. It, the best way to fix that is not with taking in sodium or potassium or anything like that, you got to get diet tonic water. The diet tonic water they sell in the supermarket, you, you just sip it. It's the, the quinine in there will prevent the clenbuterol from causing the, the muscle to contract too hard. And uh, it will release that, that cramp and you should have no problems with that. But yeah, that, th those are the, I mean, those are the worst side effects. There's really no other side. It does drop your blood pressure a little bit, but not excessively. Uh, you should never take more than 20 micrograms in one dose. So if you're, let's say you're taking 60 or 80 micrograms a day, you want to split them up 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Because if you take them, start stacking them on top of each other, it can drop your blood pressure too much. And that can make your heart start to beat faster and you might get these little palpitations. That's not going to happen if you keep the dose at 20 micrograms per, per dosing tablet. That is going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. Again, this weekend, oral classic coverage. Dave's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Um, Lee Priest is going to be there. And again, when you have these big contest weekends, you never know who we're going to bump into. We're going to try to grab, you know, some of the who's who for our post show wrap ups. We're going to try to get all sorts of crazy content from the expo. And then, of course, tomorrow night, interviews with the Arnold Classic athletes. And we're sure to bring that to all to you to the RX Muscle YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, subscribe below, hit the notification bell. If you like what you're watching, Hit the like button, comment below, and as always, we appreciate all of your support. Keep in touch with us. Um, follow us on Instagram, official underscore RX Muscle. We're going to be loading up our feed, our stories, anyone and everyone that we bump into, you know, in the course of the Arnold Classic weekend. Uh, we'll be sure to document it in one shape or form. Um, but again, it's going to be our pleasure to bring you along for the ride. And of course, looking forward to a great matchup. Hopefully an exciting one, obviously, between the likes of a, a, Hadi, a Hadi Chupan, a Samson Dowda, and we'll see who else emerges from the pile. Somebody upsets the apple cart, or if we're going to have a very, very packed three, four, and five in the open class. For Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.